Good morning, folks. Here at the fishing pond today, uh, I brought along my recently made uh, homemade spinners, weight forward spinners, and uh, three of my first feathered spinners made after inspiration from YouTube user uh, Northern Scripture from Canada. I just wanted to try this feather stuff as well. Uh, I'll give you some close shots of these lures now. Can't uh, look at it closely from afar anyway. I've lined them up here on my jacket. So I'll take the camera and give you some close shots of them and after I'll cast them to see whether they all work and if uh, spinners do not work you don't have a lot of waste you simply cut them apart again all you waste is the center wire shaft but you can always reuse all of the parts okay gonna show them to you now closely Okay, uh, at first all of the blades are homemade. I have a video out on my YouTube channel uh, explaining how to do this. So these, this particular one has a body of uh, coiled copper wire, thicker copper wire. And the quick skirt is attached over a little piece of flange tubing. Okay, here's a squid spinner with plastic squids, small bead in the head here, and uh, a lead head. I was lucky to find it, about three dozens of these on a flea market a couple of months ago. Um, as a spacer, I've made uh, coils of thin stainless wire just coiled up uh, around the nail clamp on the vise. Okay. Here you can see these coils again. Using them as spacers. Because you don't need no weight on the body of a weight forward spinner. Here are some other lead heads that I was lucky to purchase on the flea market. But only half a dozen of these I have. Okay. Um, oops. Here are some, still some different lead heads. These are the ones that I like best. You see that the mass of the body is really at the bottom. So uh, these are the most reliable not to get to spin. They are made after the design of the famous Swedish uh, Mörum weight forward spinner. Uh, these uh, weights can be put, I've got them from German eBay. Uh, they were put out by the company Cormoran, but they don't carry them anymore, so I was lucky to purchase a few. This one actually has 15 grams, I think. I have bigger ones uh, weighing 28 grams or 24. Uh, the idea of this one is, it's rather a paradox, a weight forward spinner with a Colorado blade because Colorado blades they uh, provide a lot of lift and the weight forward spinner is designed to stay deep but also it casts very far due to the heavy weight so my idea is uh, about this design to cast the shallow running spinner very far I haven't tested this model I still have to do it whether it would work and uh, well here we've got these uh, wire coils as spacers again and an ordinary skirt attached maybe you can see it here over a small pop rivet pop rivets are very useful for this you do not have to buy extra skirt bodies or so just get yourself a provided pop rivets and slide over your skirts okay and finally, I made three spinners 
uh, by inspiration of YouTube user Northern YouTube body Northern Scripture. Check out his channel, Northern Scripture from Canada. Uh, these are just crappy knockoffs of his own uh, feathered spinners. My own, they stand very far away. I did this on purpose to let the uh, spinners appear larger. I do not know whether this works. I tied these feathers around the big pop rivet and because of the flange of the pop rivet head they stand off that much. I'm, I'm uh, aware that they will be very poor to cast but I shall see. Again the body is made of uh, coiled copper wire. Actually this one is of thinner wire. Two coils uh, uh, is two coils. One coil is made around the second coil to uh, make it heavier. Um, I made trials with these. S on s I have three of these spinners but I've, uh, I've worked down the flange of the pop rivet head so uh, to different diameters so they would not stand away that much just to test you know. I think on this one I left the full diameter of the pop rivet flange. You can see it down there, the flange of the pop rivet. And uh, I think on this one, I've reduced the diameter of the flange, so the feathers would not stand that much away from the uh, axis, actually. Okay, I hope you could figure out what I mean. Uh, these are not as pretty as Northern Scriptures ones by far just jammed them together with what I had laying down in the basement. Again, homemade blades of stainless steel. Okay, I'm going to give them a swim now. All right. Okay, I hope this is going to work out. I've tied the camera into a tree. Okay, I first Test one of the feathered ones. Can't do it that deep. Oh, that's nice. Very nice. I shall see how far it casts. Oh, that's manageable for me. I hope you can see it on camera. Oh, very nice, these feathered ones. Moss, thanks a lot for the inspiration. I like it. Naturally, I would fish them deeper, just for testing. Okay, I'll test another one. I hope this footage won't be done for nothing, not that you would be unable to see something. I would not test all of the spinner. Yeah, that was a waste of time. No, it's okay. It's okay. No, this one does not work for some reason. Okay, the blade is tangled up. I have difficulties to cast here in between the trees. Oh, something is wrong with this one. It tangles. The blade tangles to the leader. I'll cast it this way. Now it works. It was tangled all the time. I hope you can see it. Oh man, how I love this feather spaniel.
But something is wrong with this particular one. Anyway, I have to find out later. Something does not make it spin permanently. It's interrupting. Yeah, it has something to do with the cleavage arrangement. I guess I have to take this one apart again. Okay, now the last feather spinner. I think I know what is wrong with the other one. The blade binds on the shaft because the attachment hole is too far away from the rim. Another way to start. Tangled up. Hmm. Yeah, this one works nicely. I know why the other feather spinner doesn't work. I have to cut it apart again and rework the blade. I just drill the hole bigger, then it will work. The blade sometimes binds against the shaft. That's the problem, that it's stopping sometimes. But basically, the design works. Yeah, very nice. Okay. Thanks for the inspiration, Noah. Thanks a lot. All right. Now testing one of the uh, Colorado bladed weight forward with the uh, Merum style lead head. Oh yeah, nice. Very nice. I hope you can see it on video. Yeah. And can we retrieve cello and cast far? I, I don't cast uh -huh. I don't cast full strength because this stretch of the pond is too small to cast far. I do not want to graze the branches of the trees with my spinner. <laughs> Oh, that's nice. Skirt nicely undulating. Okay. Test fast. Next one. Uh, one of these is the fish hat. Yeah, even spins on the drop. Nice. I love weight forward spinners. I just love them. They cast far, they don't twist your line. And maybe these Colorado ones, I can even use them in shallow water as well. Okay. Now one of the plastic squid spinners. Works as well and spins on the drop. Just like the lab head is supposed to do. Very nice. Think slowly with the blade spinning. I'm very happy about it. Only this big red feather one requires some tinkering. And now finally the ones with this quick scrub and copper coil body. Yeah, also work nice. I'm happy with this bunch of spinners. Okay. Only question is if the camera did capture something that you can see. 
I'll check this out now. All right. Okay, people. Um, I'm very happy with these uh, spinners, spinners that I've made. All the ones I've tested, they've been working fine. Only had problems of casting. Uh, I think these feathered spinners, you have to cast them with full strength and they are likely to tangle with the leader because the feathers slow them down somehow. But if you use full strength swinging your rod forward, it should work. I was unable to do this here because the stretch of the pond is very narrow and because of all of the branches. And by now I think I know why this particular one does not work or better said the blade interrupts at times is simply because the attachment hole of the blade is too far away from the rim so the uh, tip of the blade binds with the shaft on occasion and this is why the blade stops. So. I will take it apart again, what I said before, you only waste the wire shaft and uh, extend the bar or I use a bigger cleavage or whatsoever. Um, I get this one going, no doubt about it. Uh, one more thing, you might have been wondering what I have on my line here. This is an anti-tangle vein. Uh, made out of one millimeter uh, plexiglass or lexan, whatever you want to use. Uh, this is just for inline spinners not to twist your line. Naturally, if I use weight forward spinners, I do not have to attach it. But when using ordinary inline spinners like this, they tend to twist your line. So I always like to uh, switch one of these anti-tangle veins in between mainline and leader simply to extend the life, li lifetime of my line uh, of course when I use weight forward spinners I'll take this one off because uh, it costs you a bit of casting distance due to extended resistance in the air but I still prefer that than to uh, twist my line okay I hope my little spinner video was not too boring for you. Uh, thanks a lot for your interest and see you on the water next time. Goodbye.